your girl Allah Jenkins back with another YouTube video. So in this video, I actually want to talk about how um, God gave me a prophetic word that many will die soon. Okay. Um, before I get into the video, if you have not already hit that subscribe button for your girl one time for the one time, I can't even like, I, I'm usually more chipper than, I can't even be chipper. This is not a, a chipper video. This is a very serious video. Um, so number one, I, I got a mic. Okay, I had to point it out because just in case my, my return to subscribers is like, what's going on? I got a mic so it could, it could sound better. So the Lord wants me to start off this video by stating that this video is not to incite fear. Okay, it's not to incite worrying. Okay, I, and so right now I bind up the spirit of fear. I bind up the spirit of worrying that may try to, to arise from this video. Okay, you are rendered powerless, Satan. You have no authority over anybody that is watching this video. Okay, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. Okay, so this video is just a, um, what do you call it? It's one of those, just, it's just one of those that God wants you to watch and just examine yourself. That's it. It's not for you to be fearful, to be scared, to be worried. It is just to examine your walk. Okay. And God wants us to be aware as to what is going on, what he, what he is releasing in the earth. He releases it to his prophets first for them to send the warning. Okay. And so God is basically, let me, let me explain this, this word. So a few months ago, I overheard a conversation. Okay. I overheard a conversation between a friend. She was talking to her friends and <clears throat> excuse me in the conversation. One of her friends said that the Lord had um, said that he was that premature death has been released in the land. And one of his friends had died. And so the Lord said that was premature death. He died prematurely. And so ever since I heard that conversation, premature death has just been ringing in my spirit, premature death, premature death, premature death. And so the Lord wanted me to go ahead and make a video and I have to repent for, for being disobedient, for not making this video. Um, when he told me to, so he told me to make it last month. I just couldn't find the time, but I apologize. And so, um, I repent God and I'm, I'm releasing the word now. And so I will not delay going forward. And so the Lord wants me to just make everybody aware that he has released, there's, there's, there's premature death that is happening. Many will die soon. Many have already died soon. Um, well, in the past, they've already died before their appointed time. And so the Lord wants me to read just a, a few, a few sentences that he downloaded into me, what he wants me to re release as his word. And so God is saying many will die before their appointed time due to the rebellion in the land. Okay. He said, tell them after death, you cannot repent. This is the end. He said, there will be no second chances. Okay. And so he said, there are a lot of people that have passed away that wish, that pray, that hope, that believe that they could have another chance at life, but it will not happen. You only get one life to live. And so I know a lot of people say, you know, I only get one life, so I'm going to live it up. I'm going to, you know, enjoy my life. I'm going to live my best life. And so they say that sometimes in reference to sin, like I'm going, you know, I'm going to do what I want to do, say what I want to say. So I only get one life. I'm going to live it how I want to live. You know, I'm going to spend all this money because it's, it's just one life to live. And God is saying, yeah, it is one life to live. And I want you to live it righteously. I want you to live it holy okay i want you to live it sanctified for me because once you end this life there's no do-over once you end this life there's no second chances once you end this life you cannot persuade me you cannot beg you cannot pray pray to me to get a second chance that is the end it is the final that is the end there is no 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 turning around you are at the end of the road once you die so God is saying, you have got to, you got to, got to, got to live with eternity in mind, live with eternity in mind. Okay. And I'm jumping ahead of myself. And so God is saying he is angry at people who are rebellious and lack fear of him. Okay. He said he is pulling the plug on many people's lives soon. Okay. Some have already been snatched. He says some, some people have already died prematurely. Okay. And so not everybody, I want to, not everybody that's died in the past has died prematurely. Only God knows who has died prematurely. 
And he said, I have released the same command as so, spirit of suicide. Not, not everybody, not everybody, but some people God said that he allowed, he allowed it to, to not everybody, okay, disclaimer. But I have released the same, he's, God is saying, I have released the same command as Ezekiel 9, okay? But this is a warning, he's saying, be like Nineveh, okay? He's saying their initial, be like their initial response, Nineveh's initial response. And so, whew, okay, so in Ezekiel 9, let me, let me get a backstory. In Ezekiel 9, the um, Israelites and the religious leaders were extremely rebellious, they were participating in wickedness all in the temple, all over the temple. God was taking prophet Ezekiel to see how they were participating in idolatry, um, rebellion, just sin, how they were worshiping other gods and how they were just living contrary to God's word. And they kept saying, God doesn't see, God doesn't know. So they kept living in a way that they thought God couldn't see them. They thought God didn't know that they were being rebellious or that they were participating in idolatry. Scripture, scripture says it. That they, they said they were like, God can't see us. But we know that God sees all, God hears all, God knows all, okay? He knows our thoughts. Even if nobody else can know your thoughts, God know your thoughts. He know your heart. And so the Lord said the same call that he ordered to to on them for their wickedness is the same call he just ordered in relation to premature death and so he wants me to read i'm gonna read chapter nine um i haven't disclaimer i have been reading the king james version and so but for now i'm gonna read niv just so we can we can understand kind of a little bit better because uh, king james i'll be trying i'll be here all night trying to explain it but he wants me to read chapter nine and it says then i heard him call out in a loud voice and him is god and this person that's speaking is prophet Ezekiel. So then I heard him call out in a loud voice, bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city, each with a weapon in his hand. And so verse two says, and I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. And in verse three says, now the glory of the Lord of Israel went up upon the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had a wiring kit at his side. And he said, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. Okay. And as I listened, this is e prophet Ezekiel. He said to the others, this is God, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter the old men, the young men, women, the mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin in my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in the front of the temple. Then he said to them, God, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing and I was left alone, I fell face down crying out, Alas, sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath on Jerusalem? And God answered me. He answered me. The sin of the people of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. The land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice. They say the Lord has forsaken the land. The Lord does not see. Remember I said that? And then so God says, so I will not look on them with pity or spare them for I will bring down on their heads what they have done. God said, I'm going to give them what they deserve. Then the man in the linen with the wiring kit at his side brought back words saying, I have done as you commanded. I have done as you commanded. So God said that is exactly what is happening now. And so he wants me to point out that he, he said, go throughout the city of Jerusalem, put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. And he said, those people wept because they had a heart of God, heart 
of God. And so they grieved what God grieved. Okay, and that's how you know you are really affiliated with God or you're associated or you're in relationship with God is if you grieve the things that grieve him. If you grieve when people are living contrary to the word, that is confirmation that you are in alignment with Jesus. Okay, and if you do not grieve, you do not care, that may be a red flag that you are not in alignment. And so the Lord wants me to read Jonah because when God said, be like Nineveh, okay, I want to read what Nineveh did after the Lord said that he was going to destroy the city of Nineveh, okay? Jonah ch chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown, okay? So 40 days and then Nineveh will be demolished, okay? And it says, the Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. Okay, that's a sign of repentance. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with a sackcloth, and sat down in dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the kings and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything do not let them eat or drink so they went on a dry fast but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth let everyone call urgently upon god let them give up their evil ways and their violence who knows god may yet relent and with compassion turn his fierce anger and, and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish Verse 10 says, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Okay. And so that's what God is meaning. That's what God means in this prophetic word. When he said, being like Nineveh, when they first heard that they were going to be destruct destroyed for being for their evil ways they repented they went on a dry fast they cried out to the lord the king told everybody to stop listen stop right now we gotta stop being evil stop participating in all of this stuff that we got going on the lord is about to kill us and so they repented they cried out to god and god heard their cries and he withheld what he said he was going to do he withheld judgment against them because they cried out now, we know, I don't know if people, people know the story, but eventually they went back into evil and they got destroyed. But the Lord is saying that he wants us to have that same response, that initial response to this word of premature death is to repent, to cry out, to ask for forgiveness. If you are living your life contrary to the word of God, if you're living in rebellion, some people don't even know they're living in rebellion, but if you are are living in disobedience to God's word. You're rebelling against God and you are coming up against the hand of God. And God said, everybody has been marked. All of the righteous, all of the holy, all of the people that are in true relationship and true fellowship with Jesus has been marked. But those that do not have the mark are at risk of premature death. Premature death, premature death. Now God's saying that, put out the disclaimer that people that have passed away, people that will pass away, everybody will not be from premature death, okay? There was some people, there'll be some people that their time, the Lord said it's time for them to come on home, you know, bring them on up. And so, but, but God knows, only God knows, only God knows, only God knows. And so God said, while we still have time, while we still have time, Joel 2, 12 through 13, even now, this is the Lord's declaration. Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Turn, tear your hearts, not just your clothes, and return to the Lord your God. God said he don't want actions. He don't want just actions when your heart is still turned away from him. He don't want you to just be like, okay, I commit myself to the Lord. I'm going to live righteous for the Lord. I'm going to live obedient to the, to the Lord. If your heart is still turned from him, if your heart is still evil, if your heart is still wicked, God said he don't want actions. 
He wants you, he wants your heart posture to switch. And it says, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, and he relents from sending disaster. He relents from sending disaster. And the disaster we're speaking of in this video is premature death. Premature death. Premature death. Premature death. Premature death. Premature death. You don't know how long you have. You don't know when the Lord has orchestrated for you to die. The Lord says, some people I'm speeding it up because they just living so wickedly, so rebelliously as if I don't even exist. So how about I show them that I do exist? I'm going to snatch them up. I'm going to snatch them up. And there's going to be no second chances, no do-overs. He said, while you still have time, come to me. And also Luke 13, 5 says, no, I, this, is, this is the ESV version. He says, no, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And what does repentance mean? This is something that I got from uh, gotquestions.org. It's a Christian website that the Lord has led me to. And they explain it. They say repentance in the Bible involves a complete and irreversible change of mind, change of actions, and change of heart. Repentance recognizes that our sin is offensive to God. To repent means to make, to make an about face, heart directed, turn away from self to God. From the past to a future rule by God's commands, acknowledging that the Lord reigns supreme over one's existence. Repent and put God in his rightful place. Repent and put God in his rightful place. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Oh, my Lord. I hear the Lord saying, after this video... Just talk to him. Have an honest conversation with him. You know how you've been living. This is what the Lord is saying. You know how you've been living. You know what you've been doing. You know what you've been saying. You know how it makes me feel. People think that they have time. I'm going to get my life together next year, next month, or whenever in the future. But right now, I'm just going to have a good time. I'm going to have my fun. But God said, you don't know how long you got. So right now, while I'm being merciful, while I'm being gracious, while I'm being compassionate, while I'm relenting, come back to me. The Lord is saying, come back to me. Come back to me. While you still have time. Okay? Go back to the Lord. Go back to the Lord and pray for your family. Amen. Amen. Pray for your family and friends that are living contrary to the word of God. That, that don't have a relationship with God. That believe that they do. It's a spirit of deception that make people believe that they really are saved, but they really not saved. They really don't have salvation. They don't live for God here and they won't live for God in eternity. They don't have a relationship with Jesus here, and they won't have a relationship with Jesus in eternity. I pray. I just, I pray. I pray that whoever was supposed to see this video sees the video and receive, receive, receives, excuse me, what the Lord is saying. Okay? I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't come from, for the messenger. I'm just the messenger of God. Go straight to God about this word. Pray about this word. Meditate on this word. But there is a there is premature death that has been released in the land. That is 100%. The Lord is saying that. I've, I've seen it. Um, I've seen it. He's brought, he's brought back. He brought to, to mind somebody that I, you know, knew in the past um, that, he just said died prematurely. And so just live for Jesus. That's it. Live for God. Be at his feet. That's it. And he will tell you things like this. He will tell you what to pray against. You know, he will tell you about your posture, your heart posture. He will tell you the sin, the hidden sins. 
that you need to repent from, that you need to turn away from, that you need to stop doing, and he'll get you right. As long as we stay at the feet of Jesus, stay connected to the Holy Ghost, okay? We all got the Spirit of God that is the seal. The Spirit of God is, is, is what we get when we come into salvation. We're anointed with the seal. And so, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I pray that <sighs> seek God. I was about to say that I pray that you, this, this video blessed you, but just seek, seek God, okay? Okay, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, and so do I, okay? And so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye. Bye.